This is the YouTube Optics video blog series, Optics Realm. I'm Scott. This is the 10th ZMAX tutorial. It's February 2004. Today, we're going to be modeling and designing an acromatic doublet within ZMAX. I love acromats, they're so cool. If you want more background theory on how an acromat works and more history than you probably care to know on acromats, I would refer you to my optics tutorial number 10. But in review, an acromat is a positive crown, low dispersion element, and a negative flint, high dispersion element, that places the two wavelengths extremes at a single focal point, single focal length, in this case, in the visible would be red and blue, and the middle wavelength, in this case, uh, green, is off a little bit, and the distance between the two is referred to as secondary color. This is a visible glass map with three glass manufacturers, index in the vertical, uh, V number or, or Abe number if you're in the visible on the horizontal. Abe number or V number is inversely proportional to dispersion, so the higher the Abe number, the lower the dispersion. We're gonna pick, as an example, we're gonna pick two wavelengths, uh, two, uh, two materials here, sorry, NBK7 and NSF10. And I'm going to try and do it from plain parallel plates and just assume that ZMAX is a video game and you're going to see that this is rather difficult to do. So let's get started. That was me trying it earlier. I'm going to insert a few surfaces here. So I said uh, BK7 and dash BK7 for eco and NSF10. And we're going to do a convex plano. We'll make this a variable. And a plano concave. We'll make this a variable. We'll give it some thickness. Let's go 4, 1, 2 for lens thickness. And we'll make this last line a variable. Now let's change our aperture to be an image space F number. Let's just pick F5. And we've got to add wavelengths, control W. We'll just use FD and C, 46, 587, 656. And we're going to insert in the merit function, F6 is the hotkey, the focal length, EFFL. Let me get rid of all these columns just to make it nice and clean. We want a target of 100 millimeters and a weight of one. And uh, we're going to do control insert. The next line, we're going to do axial color, AXCL. We're going to go from wavelength one. I'm just going to put a large number of default to the last one. So we want this axial color from the two wavelengths extremes to be zero. I'm going to give it a weight of one. Now I'm going to hit optimize. Uh, you know what? Let's put in control insert default merit function, default merit function, DMFS. And if we don't put this in, and when I do the default merit function, would overwrite these two lines, if you recall. So design sequential merit function, we'll just do the default. We're going to hit optimize. And it gets a solution. And it's a very odd solution. Something's not working right here. Well, you've not given ZMAX a good starting point. You've given it some crazy starting point, and it's not finding a solution. So let's give it a different starting point. 55 and 55. Let's just do a lens layout. Oh, let's do a 111. Let's do a lens layout. So you can see it's a weird looking lens. Okay, so there's there's a rough starting point. So we'll hit Control Shift O, optimize, and it's found a solution. Now let's just check. Let's look at the chromatic focal shift, analysis, miscellaneous, chromatic focal shift, and we have axial color. So what is going on? We've not designed an acromat. Now, we've got the axial color constraint has a weight of 7, so we could heavily weight it. The control shift O, optimize again. You can see we still have axial color here. Now, oops. Analysis, MISC, chromatic focal shift. So what is going on? And this, this is my whole point to starting with a good solution. 
you could treat ZMAX as a video game. And, you know, I've, I've done that myself, but it's got to be done with no in theory in the background. You've got to give it a good starting point. So you could start optimizing with two plain parallel plates. You could get lucky, but often you don't. So you should start with first order equations. And especially, this is a simple doublet, and you can see how I'm struggling here. Now I'll show a video, there is a way to do this with this simple case, and I'll do another video to show you how to do that. But if you don't know that algorithm, playing a video game and not starting with the equations can really mess you up, especially as you get into more complicated systems. You get more variables, you get more constraints, and uh, it's just better to start with the first order equations. So from the optics, my optics tutorial 10, here are the equations. And I'm going to start with this last line here. We're going to do a convex plano, a plano convex, and we're going to take, um, we're going to take these equations here and put them into Excel. So we need uh, F total, ABE1, index 1, ABE2, index 2, and we've got to solve for R1 and R2. And let's see, we're going to go, oops, we're going to find we want, we will get, we need to get the index data, so I'm just going to get it off the web, shot, pdf, n dash, bk7. And I believe it's this first one here. Okay, here we go. Where did my Excel go? There we go. So, ABE1 is this V sub D right here. And it's 64.17, it's index, n sub d 1.5168. We need to do the same for SF10, shot, PDF, and SF10, data sheet. So here we go. 28.53 is its ABE, and then index 1.72828. Calculate the radii equals F total times the sum of the index. Oops. Focal length is 100. I just made a mistake there. Radius 1 equals oops, the focal length times the difference of ABE, V1 minus V2, divided by V1 times the index minus 1. Oops, forgot the 1. D. 28.7 is the radius. And radius 2 is also focal length times the difference in the ABE. V1 minus V2. I made a mistake in this in optics, uh, the optics tutorial 10. There's a sign error. I've got to go back in the YouTube comments and fix that. V1 minus V2 divided by V2 and then times the second index minus 1, so 90. Now let's see if this works, Zmax. So 28.8, I think that was it, 28.8, 28.8, 28.7, and 90.98. So we still have close to a, so there's the lens. Let's just go ahead and put a marginal ray solve. There's the lens, it's saying a focal length of 93. And we don't have an acromat still. So what's going on? Are my equations wrong? Well, no, they're not wrong. The equations work for a thin lens. This lens has thickness to kind of show what's going on. So I'm going to take the thickness away. So there's no thickness. And the focal length truly is 90, is 100. And you can see now when you, you double click here and on, uh, update the lens layout, indeed you have an acromat. So what happens here, now, now that we have um, a good starting solution, let's add some thickness to it because we've got our merit function in place. 
let's add some thickness to it and slowly maintain the achromatic solution. We can't make these lenses with, with the zero thickness. But just for giggles, let's, let's optimize this and see what happens. Control-Shift-O. And what it's now doing is it's playing with the spherical aberration. And you can see that it's, it's lost our axial color constraint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this. And I'm going to drive up the weight on the axial color. I uh, want to do the three. That's way too large. Let's try this again. Control-Shift-O. Optimize. And we're somewhat maintaining the uh, axial color. But I'm going to drive it even higher. I hate large weights. OK, so there's our axial color. Now let's add some thickness. Let's go back to what I forget what we had. 4, 1, 2. We lose our axial color. Control Shift O, optimize. And it looks like we get it back. And there's your lens. It's a convex plano crown of BK7, a plano concave flint of SF10. And it's got thickness. Now, we originally solved for the radii, but we used ZMAX to add some thickness by adjusting these two radii. Okay, now I'm going to show an advanced topic here. And this, this is glass substitution and the hammer optimization algorithm. Now, if you want to, let's say we want to optimize the glass. Let's come in and we can go to the BK7 and hit Control V. And what happens here is it's making a variable of the center, the, the D index, and the Abe at D. If you double click, you can see that it's actually varying the index, the Abe, and the partial. And it's going to wander all over this glass map. And this glass map, if you recall, you can't get glasses. This isn't like infinitely sampled glass map. There are finite discrete points here. And so when ZMAX optimizes, it's going to wander and create fictitious glasses that do not exist. So instead of doing that, ZMAX has this tool called glass substitution. So substitute. And if you want to substitute from only one glass catalog, you can insert what the catalog is here. And let's just check, control G, what glass catalogs am I using? I'm just using shot. So when it, this substitutes, it's going to do, it's only going to substitute glasses from the shot catalog. And I'm going to make this um, a glass substitute as well. Now, when you hit the damp least squares optimizer, this control shift O, it's not going to vary. It's not going to change these glasses. You have to use the hammer optimizer, H-A-A-M, or what, is there a hotkey? Hammer, control shift H, control shift H. Uh, I'm running eight cores on this, so it's going to go kind of fast, but you, this can run for days. We're going to hit Start. Now, what ZMAX is doing is it's changing glasses in and out, maintaining the focal length requirements and the color requirements. And because we've got the default merit function, it's minimizing spherical. Really, it's min minimizing aberrations, but we have zero field, and the only aberration for a rotationally symmetric system like that is spherical. And I've not covered that, but uh, there's a little snippet. So it's, it's reduced the merit function by a factor of five, it looks like. And it's changed it to NLAK33 and SF59, which is probably no longer available. Um, you can see the, the, it's maintained its achromatic solution. And I should have showed the spot diagram before. Let's do an undo and go back. Let's look at the spot diagram. Uh, the spot is huge. It's half a millimeter. So I'll hit hammer again, control shift H. Let's find another solution. And now the geometric radius is 128 microns. So it's really brought it down. And it's done that by balancing the spherical. So I've left some homework here. At, uh, at my, my day job, I'm, I've been doing more training with them and having to enter in a lot of quizzes, online quizzes. So I may be adding more homework than I've originally, than I've had in my original YouTube videos. But this first homework is designing a BK7 and SF6 lens. Each of those lenses are equa curvature. And a bunch of questions related around those, designing those in ZMAX. And then the fifth 
question is designing an acromat, a very slow acromat, out of two unique materials. And if you do that, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised what happens there. It's a, it's a really cool, really fun solution. So this is Scott from Optics Realm. If you have any requests or questions pertinent to this topic, you can leave comments on the YouTube channel, go to my webpage, or email me. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And thanks for subscribing. I've, I've been overwhelmed by the interest in this channel. Thank you, and I, I, sincerely, I sincerely appreciate it.